welcome all. Uh, I'm delighted to have each of you here tonight. Uh, tonight we have a special guest speaker who is uh, Jacinda Astles. And uh, uh, she is a passionate person to, uh, towards gender equality and uh, um, diversity. And uh, uh, she is a feminist activist and a researcher. She holds a master's degree in gender and peace building from the University for Peace and is certified as a self-defense instructor from Empowerment Self-Defense Global. She is currently working to promote the human rights of migrants through education. Her project Queer and Here focuses on promoting gender equality through self-defense workshops. She has also published a book chapter titled, It's Not Easy to Fight Against the System, Eliminating Violence Against Women in Latin America Through Empowerment Self-Defense in the Journey to Gender Equality, Mapping the Implementation of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. So, uh, Jacinta, uh, floor is yours, and uh, have a pleasant webinar all. Thank you. thank you so much for the lovely introduction, and thank you to RFP UK and EcoPeace Cafe for inviting me to speak, and also to all the participants for joining today. I'm really excited to be able to share a bit with you and also learn from you. I hope that this space um, can be one in which we all share and interact with each other, because I'm sure we all have um, contributions and experiences to share uh, regarding the topic of gender equality. So just give me one moment to share my screen. I have a short presentation. Okay. Um, can you confirm that you can see the presentation? Yes, yes, yes. we can see. Yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, so, Today, this is a quick overview of what we're going to look at in the presentation, and then we will also have breakout rooms. So we're going to look at how gender equality is defined um, and what are gender stereotypes, how can they be addressed, what are some of the barriers to gender equality and practical steps that we can take to improve gender equality. And then I'm also going to share a case study of a local and regional initiative, uh, which was mentioned in the introduction, which is empowerment of defense in Latin America. And then we're going to look at uh, what we can do in, as individuals and in our communities to promote gender equality um, in the breakout rooms. Okay, so first of all, I would like to hear from you. Uh, what comes to mind when you think of gender equality? So please go to Slido and enter in the code on the screen and we'll see what are your answers. So it should be an anonymous um, poll. You can also use your phone to scan the QR code and there's no wrong answer. So I just love to hear what comes to mind or what you think of when you think of gender equality. Equal opportunities, respect, freedom. Those are great answers. You can see a lot more answers coming in. Respecting life, valuing each other, equal opportunities, understanding. Compassion, equal rights. So I can see two trends coming out here. We can see um, on the one hand, equal opportunities. Also respect is coming up a lot. That's why it's, it's the biggest word. Um, and then also equal rights, equal responsibilities. So I think this is great because we can see that it's not just about, for example, equal rights, that all people have the right to vote, for example, but it's also equal opportunities. Um, for example, that we all have the opportunity to um, go to school or high school or university. We all have an opportunity to, um, to have a job in all different fields, if that's what we want to do. 
um, understanding each other, respecting each other, valuing each other. So it's not all, only about our rights and opportunities in our communities and societies, but also the way we interact with each other and ensuring that there's respect there and value between people. And um, I think this is coming like the opposite of discrimination, right? So that's great. Thank you all for sharing your reflections. I think that really sums up a lot of the different aspects of gender equality. And I think it really shows that it's not just one thing, there's all different parts to it um, and all different aspects that go from the individual to the community, to the national, to the global level. So I wanted to share quickly um, a definition from UN Women of um, gender equality, which also shows what I was just mentioning, that there's all different aspects. So um, it's about the equal rights, responsibilities, and opportunities of, for women and men, girls and boys, and people of all genders. Um, so I think that was really well reflected in the exercise we just did. So um, equality does not mean that everyone needs to be the same, um, but it means that we all have the same rights, responsibilities, and opportunities regardless of whether we're born female or male. And it's about also recognizing that we there's a lot of diversity within all of us as humans in the world. So there's a lot of diversity between men and women, between people of all genders. So we don't want to just consider um, that all women are the same or all men are the same and want the same things, but that we have the opportunity to choose what we want for our own lives. Um, and it also mentions that gender equality is a human rights issue and is also a central aspect for sustainable people-centered development. Okay, so I also wanted to share a statistic from the Global Gender Gap Report from 2023. So this is a report um, published each year by the World Economic Forum, which they study all the countries in the world or most countries in the world uh, according to different aspects, and then they make um, a, a finding of how far we are from achieving gender equality. So this year, the global gender gap is 68.4% out of 100. So um, we're still missing like 30, 32, 31.6% to achieve gender equality on a global scale. Um, and I wanted to invite you to have a look at um, the Global Gender Gap Index. Um, perhaps this is something we can do in the breakout rooms or at the end because we're running a little bit short of time, but I will share the link in the chat uh, once I finish the presentation. And you can go on and um, choose a country and see what, uh, what their rating is in these four pillars. So there's economy, education, health, and politics. This is just an example of Brazil. You can see that they are quite high in gender equality for education and health, and they're in the middle in economy, and they're quite low when it comes to politics. So um, this is a, just an example um, of one of the profiles that you can go and explore. Um, so we can see that in, in this measurement of gender equality, it's considering these four aspects. So it's another way for us to understand what is gender equality and how can we work towards it. So later on in the breakout rooms, we're going to be discussing um, specific issues and barriers to gender equality in your community. So maybe you can also think about um, a specific issue relating to one of these four areas. So for example, maybe you've seen that in your area, girls don't have as much access to education, to school as boys, or maybe um, most of the politicians and people in, with political power are men. And so um, this just gives you sort of a starting point to start to think about what do you think are the big issues for gender equality in your community. Um, and now I wanted to move on to gender stereotypes, which sometimes, or most of the time, are one of the uh, root causes of gender equality. They're the underlying ideas that we have about men, women, and people of all genders. And um, often they influence a lot of gender inequalities. 
So um, once again, please jump over to Slido and let's have a look at some of the gender stereotypes that we've seen in our communities or that we've heard of, maybe comments that people have made. Um, for example, women are better at cooking than men, or um, maybe men are better at sports than women. So I wanted to hear from you, what are some gender stereotypes you've heard? Women's places in the kitchen, yeah. And girls and girls like pink and boys like blue. That's a very common one. Women are better at childcare, yes. Color associations, yeah. Lifting weights is for men and care work is for women or females. Girls are calmer and kinder. Men are messy. Women are better in dresses. Yeah, there's a lot of stereotypes of what women should or should not wear. Girls talk a lot. You can see somebody else is typing. Oh. Three people are typing. These are really great. Not the stereotypes themselves, but the ideas that are coming out. Uh, that men are better with money. I think um, this is a really good example. So there's a, maybe a stereotype that men are better with money than women. So then they tend to have more control of financial resources and women tend to have to depend on the men in their lives for um, their financial resources. They don't have that kind of independence. So that's how we can see that stereotypes about gender can then be translated into real life impacts in terms of access to resources or access to opportunities. Um, men don't feel pain and don't cry. Women are emotional, yeah. Women leaders need more support. Men are better leaders. That's another one that perhaps contributes to the political inequality between men and women that we just saw, for example, with Brazil, that political inequality is very low. Okay, um, I can see here both negative and positive stereotypes. So for example, men are better with money could be considered a positive stereotype because it's saying something positive about men. And then men are messy could be a negative stereotype. Would anyone like to reflect on uh, maybe the impact of positive and negative stereotypes if um, one is um, has positive impacts or if both are negative? Um, or just any other reflections on your experiences with gender stereotypes, feel free to open your mic or raise your hand. I don't think I can see the chat right now while I'm presenting. Maybe if somebody's writing in the chat, Greshma, you can let me know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Anthony shared that women are the religious element in the family, but men don't bother. And he said that he has heard that once before. And also Nelly said that women are timid, men are powerful. Mm -hmm. These are the two in the yeah. chat box. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think those ideas also really support what we're seeing on the screen. Uh, that girls shouldn't study, they should get married. Girls are emotional and boys are logical. So you can see that there's a lot of different stereotypes, right? Um, that usually we absorb or we hear from when we're very young. And I think a really important thing to remember with gender stereotypes is really there's no such thing as a positive stereotype because when you consider, for example, 
men are better with money. Okay, that doesn't sound negative. That doesn't sound so bad, right? That's a compliment. Men are good with money. But if you consider the opposite of that, it's saying that that means women are bad with money, right? So I think it's really important that we consider gender stereotypes that we may have heard and consider that these kind of ideas um, that put this black and white thinking are, can be very harmful because by saying men are better with money, it's automatically implying that women are worse with money, right? So um, we know that the world is full of all different shades of gray and somebody may be good with money, maybe bad with money, depending on a lot of different factors that's not just about their gender, right? So um, I think that's just something really important to keep in mind when we hear um, any kind of stereotypes and any kind of comments like this. And also when we're thinking um, in our discussions about the barriers to gender equality. Okay, great. So let's keep going. Um, I also wanted to discuss um, the concept of gender. So um, we often grow up with this idea that there are two genders. It's called the gender binary of male and female or man and woman. But um, we also know that the, the gender is a spectrum and there are many different genders beyond just these two. So non-binary persons who don't identify as either female or male, trans or transgender who were assigned male at birth and identify as women or assigned female at birth and identify as a man, and gender fluid or gender queer who um, may change their gender expression in, in a fluid way and do not necessarily identify as one particular gender. Okay. Um, are there any questions about these concepts before we move on? I lost my little Zoom box. Um, I have a doubt uh, like mm -hmm. regarding the non-binary. Mm -hmm. So under non-binary, like um, like earlier, I thought like transgenders and non-binary are like in the one category. So can you please uh, elaborate yes. on that? That's a really good question. So yes, most people do consider non-binary as part of uh, trans or the transgender umbrella because um, if I'm born female and I now identify as non-binary, that means that I've changed my gender identity. So um, generally the transgender is considered anybody who does not identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. So in this case, non-binary does fall under um, trans or transgender. Yeah, so. And also I wanna point out that these categories are very Western. Um, categories, they're the ideas we or the concepts that most often we find in the Western world, but in many other cultures around the world, there are different gender identities, there are third genders, uh, for example, in Canada and the US, Native Americans have two spirit people, um, in Indigenous Australia, there are sister girls and brother boys, so, um, this is just a few examples of different gender identities, just so that we keep in mind that um, when we talk about gender equality, we're not only talking about men and women, but in your cultures and uh, communities, there may also be different terms and different identities as well. So this is not an exhaustive list. Okay. Um, so now an overview of the barriers to gender um, identity. I wanted to give you some ideas and some ways of considering what are the barriers and what are the ways that we can um, break down gender equality and try to understand it, try to make analyses in our communities and try to see from those analyses, how can we try and find solutions? So one of the ways that we can start to think about what are different barriers are by looking at the different levels. Um, so we have individual and, com and family and then community, sorry for the mistake there, um, province or state level, national and then international. Um, 
And then within each of those levels, we can think about different kind of challenges and different uh, stakeholders that may be involved. So at the individual or family level, perhaps there's um, family, certain families that don't allow their daughters to go to school, but their sons are allowed. And then at the community level, perhaps there's a perception that um, girls should stay in the home and do not need an education. And then at the national level, perhaps there's a policy that girls are not allowed to go to school. So just to give um, like a very basic example of how different levels may be working together or working against each other to um, to either to create barriers for gender equality. In this example, perhaps the, the national government realizes that this is an issue and so they try to create a national policy to encourage girls to go to school and then that creates changes in the other levels. So um, this is just a tool for us to use to consider where are the barriers and where are the opportunities in each of these levels when we're trying to create solutions for gender equality. And then we can also think in each of those levels about different stakeholders. So we have private sector, so private companies, NGOs, media outlets, academic institutions, and governments. So we can consider how each of these different actors could work together to help us to create um, or to promote gender equality, or they could also work against us if they're not on board with promoting gender equality. Okay. And then um, lastly, I wanted to share um, the six pillars that we use for a gender analysis. So these are really important for um, if you're designing a program to promote gender equality, considering um, each of these six points from a gender perspective. The first one is access to resources. So is there a difference between how men, women, non-binary people have access to resources in this particular area. Let's say it's in your immediate community. Um, do men own more land? Do men have more money? Do women have more education? And then time and space is about um, the access to time. So who has more free time? In a lot of communities, women have a lot more work as we saw in the gender stereotypes. Women have a lot more responsibilities within the home, so they may not have as much time as men. So if you're offering, um, for example, scholarships to study um, technology, maybe you get more uh, applicants from men because they have more time to take on these kind of programs. Um, the legal rights and status, so what rights do um, people of different genders have in your community? Um, right to marriage, right to own property, right to bank accounts, uh, all of those different legal rights that um, may affect your program. And then power and decision-making is about who makes decisions within households, within families, and uh, how could that affect whether women, men, and people of diverse genders would be able to participate in your project. And then knowledge, beliefs, and perceptions are um, the stereotypes that we were talking about earlier. So what kind of beliefs exist that could stop women, for example, from wanting to participate? Uh, is there a belief that women are bad with computers, so they're not going to sign up to a technology course? Um, so these kind of um, beliefs and perceptions about gender could affect the success of your program. And then practices and participation is about um, the willingness of people of different genders to participate in different initiatives. And um, what kind of uh, practices do they have? What kind of activities are they already involved in in their communities? Are men more involved in sports? So maybe if you have a sports program, it's gonna be easier for them to participate than women. Okay. Um, and just to wrap up, I wanted to share a case study of um, self-defense, which I did some research into um, across Latin America. So I conducted five interviews with instructors from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Costa Rica, and Mexico. Just gonna do a quick time check. Okay, we're running a little bit behind. So I'm just going to give a really quick overview. Um, so this is just to give you an example before you go into the breakout rooms of a, a program that aim to reduce um, gender inequality and violence against women. 
So it's based on the logic that um, the more violence against women and gender-based violence, the less equality, right? Because women are um, suffering from violence, so they have less opportunities to participate fully in society. So in this case study, um, the program taught physical, nonverbal, and verbal techniques to help prevent gender-based violence. And um, what we found is that one of the biggest challenges in the program is that we're working within a patriarchal system that's based on gender inequality and trying to change it from the inside out. So that was one of the biggest difficulties. We're trying to change um, a system, but we also need to work within that system. Um, and what, another challenge were the misconceptions about self-defense that it um, teaches participants to be violent and that um, men should be taught not to be violent rather than um, teaching women um, because the problem is with men, not with women. So these were some of the issues that came out that were sort of the barriers to the pro um, to being able to um, roll out this program. Um, and the successes were that um, many instructors developed uh, partnerships with different governments, which allowed them to create long-term and scalable uh, programs, especially around key dates like the International Day Against Violence Against Women. And um, other instructors also developed relationships with NGOs and community organizations, which allowed them to roll out their programs to vulnerable communities. Um, with academic institutions such as schools, instructors were able to reach uh, adolescents and expand their programs. And through the private sector, there was interest in companies paying for self-defense classes for their employees, but that will also pose a barrier in some cases because particularly male CEOs were not in favor of the idea of teaching women self-defense. And then in the media, there was also um, opportunities to promote self-defense, um, to um, promote respect for women through, through collaborations with media outlets. And it also allowed um, the instructors to uh, share their uh, techniques to a broader audience. So that's just a quick overview of one, um, one initiative and how they faced um, different barriers and opportunities according to the different stakeholders that I mentioned at the um, start of the presentation. Um, so I hope that that very, very quick overview gives you some ideas of how you can work with different stakeholders uh, in your programs. And now I think it's time to jump into the breakout room. So these are the discussion questions. We can also maybe drop them in the chat so you can refer to them. So I think you have 15 minutes. Um, we're a little bit behind time, but we'll give you a warning when you when you just have one minute left so you can wrap up the discussion. But I would love to hear from you in the breakout rooms. Um, what barriers do you see to gender equality in your communities? What do you think are the biggest barriers? And maybe you can choose one to focus on. And then what do you think could be done to reduce this barrier and what stakeholders could be involved? And then also share if you know of any existing initiatives that are trying to reduce this barrier. Okay, so um, maybe I'll pass it back so that you can jump into the breakout rooms. Yes, I'm aligning the rooms now. Thanks. So I think I'm gonna make uh, groups in twos. Uh, so we can have a yeah dialogues. Everyone is back now. Um, I will start with room one. I had uh, Natalia and Shantana, who would like to reflect on the chat that you had. I was seeing the microphones burning up there, so I'm quite curious to find out. <laughs> Who would like to share? Who would like to volunteer? Shall I shall I take some bits from each of you? So there uh, are aspects. <laughs> maybe Shantu, you can like it was really interesting discussion. And uh the, like obviously we were like so on, on the opposite uh, polars. 
<laughs> if I can say uh, where where we are located. But it, yeah, I think uh, Shantou, you can like just if you don't mind, give some um, uh, summary. I, I, was, I was about to tell you the same thing that maybe you can, but I'll just cover a little bit and then you can finish the rest of it. So what we really discussed was. Uh, where we come from and where we are at the present moment, what do we see in terms of gender disparity? And mm -hmm. uh, she comes from Russia, I come from India. Uh, in general, there is definitely this patriarchal structure in which we are trying to fit in and we are trying to save that structure somehow, which we know is not really working and won't be working because it's, it's like a car that is... One wheel is too big and another wheel is very small. So the car would fall definitely. So we were talking about it and uh, I shared the spiritual practice that I practice and that has helped me personally and my community to become stronger. And she was sharing about a thing that I really appreciate that to have this self-mastery on the self when you are doing something wrong to someone else. Mm -hmm. To tell yourself, though, this is wrong. I should stop right there. So that is very important. So I like that one. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shantana. Uh, yeah, to, just to quickly to say like what my take was. So what I liked, uh, what, what was interesting and inspiring as well, that uh, Shantu, Shantanu shared that uh, because he's from Brahma. Um, Brahma Kumari. <laughs> Bra Brahma Kumari. Uh, uh, re like religion and uh, so he said like in, in their uh, practice they actually uh, kind of the, not so much uh, gender inequality there because uh, actually the leaders are female in that organization and actually like it was interesting the view that's actually from uh, coming from men actually, to hear that uh, because of their structure of organization for like for 70 years it was like practiced and another thing that's actually they see the energy of each person that they, they don't uh, kind of focusing on uh, gender rather than energy as you as a being then what you look like what is your appearance and what I shared, it was uh, like kind of, I consider my community, like Christian community, like we were talking more about it. And I just shared that in evangelical practices and in, in um, at least that's what I've seen in, in uh, the Russian Orthodox Church. So the role of women actually limited to servants and uh, majority are uh, leaders are men. So actually it's like kind of patriarchal um, focus in uh, but also there was an example here in, um, but some in evangelical churches, they have uh, female preachers as well. So then they shift this, they give the representation of uh, uh, we, female preachers in, in there. But also, for example, I'm part of Anglican Church here, which actually supports LGBTQ and uh, they have female preachers, which is not so many churches does. So... Yeah, so that's what we're discussing. And also another interesting thing that uh, uh, Shantanu shared, that's actually to become an observer. Uh, it's it's way to go to actually see what is going on. Like when you're inside the system, it's hard to see the change because you're part of it. But when you step back, actually then where you can see, uh, okay, what's going on? What we can change? And uh, so what action we should, well, that's what I liked. That actually, sometimes we need to take this observant seat and uh, like reflect on uh, like what are we doing and what the best way to do. So thank you very much. Thank you, Natalia. Uh, Jacinta, do you have any comments, or shall I continue with the second room? I just want to thank you for sharing both of you and I really um, like that last comment about um, taking a step back to observe more from the outside and to see um, what needs to be changed because um, as I mentioned we grow up with all of these ideas and um, this notion that this is the way it is and that's it um, so I really appreciate that contribution and all of the other comments as well so thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the Room number two, actually number three, I had Anthony and also Yvine. Uh, 
and Jacinta yourself, but I think I'll ask to the <laughs> participants and we'll start again with Anthony, with uh, with our male participant and then continue with even if Anthony is available. Or I think he had some connection issues in, in some moments, so. Okay, uh, would you be happy to uh, reflect on what you discussed in the room too, even? Yeah, so I was uh, telling uh, Jacinta later, Anthony joined as well, that, well, I am from Brazil and uh, he, he was even used Brazil to, <laughs> to show the gender gap in there. So it is quite bad. Uh, and then move, living now in the Netherlands, I feel even more it's like this stepping back, right? So you, I feel even more um, how those differences, because um, growing up there uh, with my in with in my family, the women are expected. So I, those social expectations that you have to be a housewife, you should look uh, for your family. Uh, you are discouraged to study and be independent. Uh, and even nowadays, I still hear from my mother that if I, there is some problems, or oh, you, you are lucky that you have your partner to solve it for you. or So uh, those are small things. But um, if you are growing up uh, accepting this as a norm, you are quite limited. And the way to go that I think, because it's a very cultural problem, is within generations, seeing more women occupying leadership positions, uh, being at those uh, positions that we are said that we should not go. And then the, the, uh, that could... That does, the movement could uh, open minds within time. I think. Thank you, Ben. Uh, do you have any additions, Anthony? Hello. Hi, I'm, um, I'm from Scotland. And so I would say that in Scotland, we've got, you know, a tradition of sort of movements towards gender equality from the government. Um, and you had obviously a female first minister for a long time. She just retired there, Nicola Sturgeon. And we also have um, an interfaith Scotland uh, in the world of interfaith. We've got women's groups. Uh, just dedicated to women talking about different issues from different faith backgrounds. I think that's probably one of the main issues I would say in you know my own context in Scotland is that different religious groups have different views of gender, and that can be a challenge. Uh, and I think that you know trying to navigate that is just about focusing on the key, the key aspects. You know, everyone should be free to pursue what sort of goals they want to pursue and to marry who they want to marry and things like that, and to you know to pursue the sort of career they want to pursue. And I think that's a challenge. And I think um, you know. We have to have a dialogue with different communities um, and we have to try and highlight, you know, that gender equality is important and things like that. So I suppose that's the only thing I would have to say about, you know, the context in Scotland. It's not much, but that's that's all I can think of. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, do you have any comment again, Jacinta, or shall I continue with the next room, which is the last one as well? Um, just to say, yeah, we had a really interesting discussion in our group because, um, uh, well, I mean, moved from Brazil to the UK and Netherlands, and I moved from Australia to Costa Rica. So we've had like these experiences of gender, different gen levels of gender equality throughout the world, and then hearing about Scotland as well. So it was just really interesting to share how how different it is in all of these different places. Thanks. Thank you, Jacinta. And uh, the next group, last but not least, was uh, uh, with Greshma, uh, Sri Hari, and also Yahuza and Nelly. Uh, who would like to go first? I have so many names at the moment, I cannot pick this time. Uh, shall I start with you, Greshma, and then maybe the rest names would like to add on. I know Sri Hari joined us um, to the breakout room. Yeah, like we share like how our countries are like uh, Nelly is from DR Congo and I joined from India and Srihari from Scotland. 
and uh, who's uh, has some issues with uh, um, with voice so um couldn't share so what we discussed is like how like um like in our communities men uh, men have have like more powerful voice than women and um like still um uh, still there are like uh, like a patriarchal mindset but there are like um there are like lots of initiatives are coming up to break that at the national level or like in, in the policy level but still we need to translate that policies into actions and actions are also coming up and when i deeply reflect on my community and how um like the gender balance is happening there are like lots of differences are coming up especially for the transgenders there are like more rights and more people are coming up they are giving like they are getting like more opportunities and they started when they started um like sharing about their identities now the family is also accepting that and family is also supporting it's very different from uh, like previous years but now we can see that uh, parents are supporting for their marriages and their relationships so there are like a very positive change Uh, can be seen in my communities and also uh, one thing i really feel is the change uh, come to the media and how the films shows this kind of relationships and how uh, they change their like wedding or like how they express about the women earlier like women or even the men there were like lots of stereotypes in the earlier fi- films or movies in india but these days they are like the film makers are more conscious about that and they are really using a uh, very accurate words and like gender conscious words and, and they are avoiding lo- lo- like all the forms like not all the forms but they are trying their best to avoid the body shaming kind of words or like so the changes are really visible in the movie so that i i feel like movies are really influence people so when we what we see in the movies that also influence people so people are also started changing and accepting this and yeah so that's from my side and i hope sri hari would love like to share more thank you grashma uh, yeah who's i heard that you had a, a microphone problem if you'd like to share anything you can also use the chat uh, sri hari do you have any additions to grashma's point Oh, oh I'm really? I'm really really sorry that I've joined uh, so late. So I was just I was saying Reshma I was trying to catch the pulse of the discussion that was happening and uh, so unfortunately I don't have anything clever or wise to add just because I completely um, missed the pulse of uh, what was being discussed but I think what was being discussed is the challenge um, challenges in the society and I Yeah, first of all i'd like to thank anthony for giving a shout out to interface scotland i'm one of the board members of interface scotland and i totally uh, watch what anthony said that uh, our director is a woman uh, morin sayer and our chair of the board is a woman and uh, they both do an absolutely fantastic job steering the organization so um going back to the challenges um i was giving example of the misinformation seeds that were sown into the minds of uh, indians uh, around uh, 16 and uh, towards the end of 1600 or 1700 and how that influenced an entire three or four coming generations about um, the criminality of uh, being gen- gender fluid and as rishma was just introducing in the recent times seeds are being sown again that gender can be a fluid concept and it's not really a fixed masculine or feminine it and the more than a challenge i'm seeing as an opportunity just now that there is a awesome opportunity just now to sow a seed which will probably make things uh, change in the next 3 or 4 generations that gender is fluid and and uh, 
and that everyone is equal and everyone has uh, exactly the same potential to achieve and uh, live a life that they want. So I think the challenge is to accept that we need to sow the seed and then know that we won't get a result in this generation, but maybe in the next generation or the generation after that. But uh, I think that's all I could catch the pulse of the discussion. So I'll just uh, mute myself now. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Hari. Your points were <laughs> quite, uh, I think, um, meaningful for each of us, because uh, uh, regardless what background we are from, uh, we do have the similarity, uh, the huge similarity of what you just said uh, regarding the problems uh, in gender-based gender, gender -based problems. Neely, do you have any uh, comments on, or would you like to share it on the in, in the chat? Um, I I have one comment actually, which I wasn't in any of the breakout rooms. Um, um, I'm actively part of a, a social um, social anthropology group, which are working actively in southern part of Turkey in the villages, which are uh, small in numbers villages. There are about um, sixteen villages, uh, which they live with a different culture, uh, which obviously is not too different to what we are we've learned or what we've heard perhaps um, in our lives. So they do uh, respect too much their uh, leaders. I'm not talking about faith leader uh, necessarily. I'm talking about the elderly uh, people that they have too much respect, which those elderly group of people are kind of the commanders of their lives, the young people's lives. And I want to grab your attention to child marriage. I know it's not gender-based, but technically it's gender-based uh, as well. And uh, uh, there are uh, some societies where their elder elderly um, uh, think that men should just take on whatever the family um, uh, employment is or family business is uh, and that happens in very young age so they the boys also shouldn't uh, uh, I mean, they don't go to school at all. They just go to per maybe if they are lucky to first three years of primary school or five years. And then when they turn age 15, which is quite late uh, yet, they need to get married. And age 13 is for a girl. Um, when biologically they are considered uh, uh, as women, not girl anymore. Uh, and... Uh, uh, they, they cannot study because they just have to get married so they 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 are just useful for the continuation of the family name so uh, we started that research i mean i'm i i'm not part of the uh, uh startup of the project but i'm member of the project and uh, uh, we are trying to educate people uh perhaps second generation or third generation, but not the elderly age groups because they don't accept our pre uh, presence there. <laughs> uh, in uh, uh, that life is not only about what um, a name and older name tells you, but actually there are so many things as an individual you can do. Perhaps you can pick another uh, um employment or you can educate yourself but don't do anything right like uh, it's basically more than that more than whatever a group of four people or three people tell you uh so just wanted to add this here because uh, i find it uh quite extreme i'm not referring to culture we cannot live without our cultures. They are kind of part of our identity, but the understanding of that uh, there is only three or four names who can kind of guide our lives. Uh, I find that quite controlling and quite extreme to accept. 
that was it, uh, Jacinta. Uh, I think uh, now is question and answer time. If there are further questions or comments, I think I would like to receive it. Just unmute yourself or you can raise your hand and uh, uh, ask your question or your you can leave your feedback. You can always use the chat too. Anthony. Anthony, I think he wanted to send it uh, to the um, everyone <laughs> part, but he sent it to me. So uh, apparently uh, interfaith marriage is often an issue, even in Scotland. And um, uh, he was referring to, um, you know, different interfaith marriages, which were causing problems and difficulties in uh, in their societies. Um, yeah. Um, any I think it ties into the, sorry, um, can you hear oh, me? Yes, Anthony, we can hear you. The connection is quite bad. I was just, I think it ties into the point you made about child marriage, because I just thought of that thing when you were talking about it, that child marriage doesn't really, I mean, there have been instances where we've had, there have the, been one or two marriages that they've tried to contract that have been underage and thankfully the law steps in, but you know, there are still a lot of forced marriages in the UK and in Scotland, and it's not often talked about. And it's a serious, serious issue. And I think that, you know, it's the, the best thing I can think of is that action through the schools. But the teachers have a lot of, you know, I was actually teaching a school a few years ago, and it's certainly an issue. And I think that I have met people who have been through these issues. And interfaith marriage is becoming very common because we're living in a pluralist society. And I think that's a good thing. But I think it's also about how do we articulate this in dialogue? Because a lot of religious identities are very, very conservative. And I think that's very, very difficult to try and work out how we can get around these problems. It's just an observation. It's nothing, you know, but it's, it's just, an, it's one of the issues that I've, I've seen in my own sort of social circle uh, in Scotland. Yeah, I agree with you, Anthony. And a uh, uh, weird fact, but some of the young people that we had uh, interviewed, they actually believe in this and they they just feel half if they don't get married by age 15 uh, or if they don't take on the family uh, business uh, is just super disrespectful for them as if they are uh, rejecting their family kind of. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but it relies on under the education, I believe, like showing them their rights, their values as an individual, not just uh, uh, as the family name or what, what the family name should carry on. Um, there are some messages in the chat. Thank you, Shantana, for joining us. Um, Nelly has a comment on uh, gender equality is a barrier, but it is a good for any women to promote and develop strategies and take decision on appropriate areas for intervention to address these barriers and constraints I identifies, uh, develop gender equality change in gender re relations. Yeah, that was what we were all basically uh, commenting on. Um, I think there are not uh, any other uh, questions or comments, Jacinta. I think uh, we are approaching towards the end of this uh, webinar. Um, hi, Ben. Welcome. Uh, well, let's hi, take. Uh, uh, yeah. How are you? Uh, how everyone? I just say coming from the conference from Sarajevo. We talk about the Christ, Christ, Ukraine Christ, the Balkan civil society. All of the religious uh, communities and also the women religious community. In this fact, we are uh, equal together. Yeah. Gender equality in religious community is very important. I think uh, we must uh, work uh, hard to change some conservative minds in our communities. But uh, together, in specific for youth, uh, for youth uh, practicals in our religious communities. I am in, in car and I apologize because I, I, I come later, but I will be always in the time uh, in the future. 
Thank you very much. And, uh... No, wor not to worry at all, Ben. Thank you for joining us. And I'm actually so happy to see more male names joined us tonight uh, rather than uh, female names. It, it may look similar, but uh, considering Greshma, myself, and uh, Natalia, and even being RFP UK staff, Jacinta is our guest speaker. We technically received only one female name who joined, uh, who participated. And uh, uh, that is great because uh, we are really uh, together in this. It's not that there is no discrimination towards men or stereotypic uh, understanding of men. Um, there, we are similar, you know, as much as there are for female hate talks or, you know, stereotypic talks is similar amount towards men. Like uh, I really liked uh, a comment when, when we were doing the interactive quizzes, men don't cry. That That is not a rule <laughs> who invented this so uh yeah um i'm thankful to each of the wise comments and sharings that we received tonight uh jacinta uh, please feel free to uh, com conclude your um, ending comments and uh, i think we can wrap it, wrap up uh, this webinar then and greshma you too Thank you. And thank you to everyone for your participation, your comments and reflections. I think it was a really enriching uh, conversation and it gives me a lot to think about of um, what are the ways forward so that we all can continue working together for gender equality. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Jacinda. And thank you so much to all participants who joined for this conversation today. And please, uh, and this session we call like gender equality. Let's talk and practice. So, um, like after each session, we always share that now it's time to act, and now it's time to transform our own life and think about how we can work more for achieving the gender equality. So, thank you so much, Jacinda, for doing this uh, wonderful uh, session with interactive. Um, kisses that really help to reflect on our own thoughts. So thank you once again for joining today. And and this so with this session we complete our first stage of UK IY and Eco Peace Cafe um, project. And we will be having our next stage from September 15. So stay tuned for more details. We will be sharing more details and more exciting news in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thanks from my side and over to you, Eda. Thank you so much again for joining us. I wish you have all a pleasant evening, pleasant morning or afternoon and take care. Thank you, Jacinta, for your presentation as well. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. See you Bye. soon. Bye.